sick. <laughs> Freaking raw. Yeah, get owned, idiot. <laughs> oh man, this is fun. I think that went pretty well. Let's see. Dang, that went really well. So glad to be here playing this and not like talking about an ice barrier shot to deck or something. Oh. This is not my beautiful house. This is not my beautiful life. In 2019, if you had told me something like Ice Barriers are getting support next year, I would have taken it as a throwaway joke and at most imagined something pertaining to a retrain of Trishula. If you had told me they're getting a structure deck next year by beating out Cyber and Gustos in the OCG structure deck voting poll, I would have given you a wedgie and took your lunch money while calling you a dweeb or something. However, Destiny is a cruel old hag and as it so happens, it will occasionally weave the threads of fate into the structure deck freezing chains. On one hand, we are kind of in a dual terminal renaissance, with many archetypes present in the lore getting a sudden surge of support, regardless of the story being finished a long time ago. Something as plot significant as Ice Barriers getting some belated attention would make sense in this context, but on the other hand, they beat Cyber and Gustos? How does that happen? On all accounts, this should be a support report, but because this is one of the most intense updates to a deck's playstyle we've seen here since Vampires, and due to the archetype's lovely reputation, it's being given a slightly fancier show. Also, I'm sure this does doesn't need any pointing out, but all these card names are tentative until the structure deck is released in the TCG, so don't be confused by the video in case the western release of their new synchro ends up with the name Trishula, the super cool dragon of the nice barrier. So as this is a quote unquote fancier show, let's start off with the fanciest guy of the bunch. Frost Spirit of the Ice Barrier is a level 1 sea serpent tuner with 400 attack and 200 defense, and while you control another ice barrier monster, monsters your opponent controls lose 500 attack and defense. During your main phase, you can send one level 3 or lower ice barrier monster from your deck to the graveyard, and if you do, this card's level becomes the sent monster's level until the end of this turn. You can only use this effect once per turn. Frankly, this card could banish my entire deck face down when summoned, and I would still love it because it looks like this. I refer to this phenomenon as the Tsuchinoko effect. You might think the stat reduction is meaningless, and you'd be right for the most part, but depressingly enough it's one of the better stun effects the new ice barriers have in store. I'll leave it up to your imagination to think what the other ones are like before we get to them. Anyway, Frost Spirit is okay, and thankfully not an actual spirit monster, or this section would have been spoken in a radically different tone. It's a tuner with light level modulation and graveyard setup, which are both great features for a monster you tend to special summon off other monsters, with the slight downside that it hampers itself by the level 3 limitation. Even with the new support, Ice Barriers still have problems with accessing their higher level monsters, and a graveyard dump followed by a revival would have circumvented the issue, but they were clearly terrified of Royal Knight just wrecking the meta into pieces. Run 2 or 3 of these, just for the love of god, try not to waste your normal summon on it. The only level 2 among the new support is Attendant of the Ice Barrier. This one brings them warm beverages. And also it's a warrior with 500 attack and 300 defense, and you can tribute this card to special summon one level 5 or higher Ice Barrier monster from your hand. If this card is in your graveyard, except during the turn it was sent to the graveyard, you can target one level 3 or higher water monster you control, have that monster lose 2 levels, and if you do, special summon this card, but banish it if it leaves the field. You can only use each effect of Attendant of the Ice Barrier once per turn. Remember Prior of the Ice Barrier? Well, we finally got Later of the Ice Barrier. Immediately a lot more niche than the funny frog, but it has its uses. Primarily, you finally have a way to put your high level monsters such as Royal Knight on the field without too much effort, because god knows Magic Triangle is a bit outdated. The graveyard effect is a little weird, but it can potentially assist in synchro and link plays, so overall it's a tolerable card. Kinda pointless if you have no level 5 or higher monsters to put out, but you're playing Ice Barriers, so you're used to taking what you can get. First of their three new level 4s is Vessel Miko of the Ice Barrier, a spellcaster with 1000 attack and 1800 defense, and if you control another Ice Barrier monster, defense position monsters your opponent controls cannot change their battle positions. You can only use each of the following effects once per turn. If you control an Ice Barrier monster, you can special summon this card from your hand. If you control an Ice Barrier monster, you can banish this card from your graveyard, special summon one Ice Barrier token, which is a level 1 water aqua type with zero attack and defense, and it doesn't even summon it to the opponent's side of the field. Why I order? Here we have the first example of the somewhat bizarre stun effects given to the new Ice Barriers, of which this one is not particularly embarrassing as it is is pointless. The deck has zero focus on battle position switching aside from one new effect which is not even good. I mean, I know why the stun effects are like this, and it's not a good reason, but I'll give you an image as a hint. 
The other two effects are actually fine. It's simple field building and not much else, but this deck was sorely lacking in swarming considering they need field presence to get their effects off, so having a monster that's always present is great. Naturally, you can also use it as exodeck material, as it's a level 4 body that's optimal for synchro, exes and link plays, and it leaves a token which you can then use for further plays. I'd say play as many as you can. That fox looks really freaking weird though. Miko, you can't convince me that thing is not taxidermied. The second level 4 in the lineup is Mirror Master of the Ice Barrier. Another spellcaster, this one with 1700 attack and 1000 defense, and while you control another Ice Barrier monster, your opponent cannot tribute summon. You can only use each of these effects once per turn. You can discard one card, special summon one Ice Barrier tuner from your deck, also you cannot special summon monsters for the rest of this turn except water monsters. If you would activate an Ice Barrier monster's effect by sending a card from the hand to the graveyard or discarding, you can banish this card from your graveyard instead of one of those cards. Wow, where was this stun effect during Klee's, Monarchs and True Dracos? And nothing else. God, it doesn't even say the opponent can't tribute cards at all, it just prevents tribute summons. H how are you outclassed by a 19 year old trap card? Is this about the Ice Coffin token? Because Royal Knight already has that thing secured, don't you worry about it. Again, we have another moment of prioritizing lore over sensible card effects, and this one is not even the worst among the bunch. But on the other hand, it summons a tuner from the deck. Bam 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 bang right off. Along with Frost Spirit, a good target to summon is Defender, which has a stun effect that's relevant surprisingly often, and is still a great level for synchro plays. Aside from this phenomenal effect, it also replaces the cost of a few of your cards, primarily Strategist, Bryonac and Gungnir, barring the fact that it's nearly 2021 and if you're summoning an Ice Barrier Synchro that's not Trishula, you're probably just roleplaying. So it's safe to say you should run 3 of these, naturally because it completely shuts down Earthbound Immortals and no other reason. The last level 4 among their new monsters is Mirror Judge of the Ice Barrier. You're gonna wanna clench your teeth for this one and it's not because of the cold. It's a warrior with 1800 attack and 900 defense and while you control another Ice Barrier, monster, your opponent loses 500 life points each time they pay life points to activate a card or effect. You can only use each of the following effects of Mirror Judge of the Ice Barrier once per turn. You can target up to two Ice Barrier monsters in your graveyard and up to two cards in your opponent's graveyard, shuffle them into the deck. If you control an Ice Barrier monster, you can banish this card from your graveyard, then target one attack position monster on the field, change it to defense position. For those who were concerned that the direction Konami was taking the new Ice Barrier support was far and away from the olden days of Royal Knight, fear not! They brought them right the fuck back down to their roots with Mirror Judge and its incomprehensible array of effects that serve no practical purpose whatsoever. The life point drain is sure to give the evil eye player at your locals a bout of discomfort for a solid turn and a half, the recovery effect is outclassed by Caravan which came out 7 centuries ago, and the battle position shift not even being a quick effect is the most embarrassing thing I've seen in my life. This one is up there with Flamevel Magician in the high echelon of lore influenced nonsensical effects which leave you wishing the card was actually a normal monster to save your yourself the mental damage of reading it. Go ahead, turn the Steel Swarm Link monster to defense position. Do it! It's what you were made to do! Their last new main deck monster is General Wayne of the Ice Barrier. If you're confused about the name, this would be X Saber Wayne who was just really salty about the outcome of the TCG voting poll and decided to defect to the archetype that was actually getting support. Hey, if you can't beat them, join him. He's a level 5 warrior with 2100 attack and 400 defense, and any spell or trap sent from the field to your opponent's graveyard is banished instead. If your opponent controls a monster and you control an Ice Barrier monster, you can special summon this card from your hand. If this card is normal or special summoned, you can add one Ice Barrier spell or trap card from your deck to your hand. You can only use each of these effects once per turn. The stun effect is interesting, since it doesn't seem to be built exclusively around lore and has actual meta usage, even though it's pretty limited as it is. The summon condition makes the card dead on turn 1 unless you have a Tendent or Royal Knight and an Ice Coffin token, of course. But the back row search is good because this deck has some surprisingly good spell cards. He seems bricky, but the deck still imposes a lot of annoying restrictions on his monster searching, and the only convenient way to fetch him is Medallion, so run him and his Butter Knife at 3. Good one, Wayne. In the Ice Johnson. Well, I hope you enjoyed all the advantage you were generating off all these cards, cause you're about to spend all of it on this. Ultra Super Deluxe Giga Trishula, the Sub-Zero Dragon of the Ice Barrier, is a level 11 water synchro with 2700 attack and 2000 defense, requires one tuner and two or more non-tuner monsters, and when this card is synchro summoned, you can banish up to three cards your opponent controls. If this synchro summoned card in its owner's control is destroyed by an opponent's card, you can special summon one Trishula Dragon of the Ice Barrier from your Exodec or Graveyard, then the current attack of any face-up monster your opponent controls becomes halved, also their effects are negated. You can only use this effect once per turn.
It's a trash monster, did you expect it not to do all this? I don't have to explain to you why non-targeting banished 3 on summon is good, and even though the overtly specific floating is there for the sake of tying into the fight with Escalon lore-wise, it still shits out a massive synchro and inflicts blunt force drum on the opponent's entire field. We also finally got a level 11 synchro that's not Star Eater or High Lord Volnir, so that's good even though its summoning condition is a little demanding. Still, there's really no explicit downside to this thing. It's a good generic synchro that tears everything up, so it lives up to the original's legacy more than enough. On to the few spells and traps. First is the normal spell, the Calm after the Ice Barrier Storm. Tribute any number of Ice Barrier monsters, special summon the same number of level 4 or lower Ice Barrier monsters with different names from each other from your deck. During your main phase, except the turn this card was sent to the graveyard, you can banish this card from your graveyard, then target one of your Ice Barrier monsters that is banished or in your graveyard, add it to your hand. You can only use each of these effects once per turn. The level limitation is completely understandable, but still a bit annoying. It fetches out any combo piece you could need, as long as you had existing field presence, which is pretty easy now with all the new support. It can give you access to most of the ice barrier locks you're able to make with your monster lineup, or be a great tool for Exodic plays. With all the level 4 water monsters you got in here, I wonder what you could possibly make. The possibilities are... The graveyard effect is also some nice recovery, given the banishing and discarding your monster's performance cost. Run as many as you feel comfortable with. Look at my man Ascalon ascending over there though. Chicago. The other new spell card is the continuous spell Clear Wall of the Ice Barrier. When this card is activated, you can target one level 4 or lower Ice Barrier monster in your graveyard, special summon it. While you control 3 or more Ice Barrier monsters, Ice Barrier monsters you control are unaffected by activated effects from any opponent's monster special summon from the Exa deck. You can only activate one Clear Wall of the Ice Barrier per turn. This one has a lot less excuses for the level limitation, but it's still pretty good. Naturally, it can retrieve your combo pieces or strengthen your field, which is great to have in a deck that tends to discard from time to time. It's just a it's a shame that it only works on low-level monsters, because some way to add consistency and recursion to the generals would do wonders for the deck, but they just didn't feel like letting it do that. Not even Royal Knight! Its protection ability is arguably one of the best effects in the archetype, as it shields your entire field from some really devastating monsters, and combined with things like Defender and Spellbreaker, it can be legitimately difficult to get over. It's not a lockdown as much as it is a speed bump, but it tends to be enough to give the deck some staying power. Run 3. Their final new card is the normal trap, Pulse of Trishula. Apply these effects in sequence based on the number of Ice Barrier Synchro monsters you control with different names. One or more, banish one card your opponent controls. Two or more, banish one card from your opponent's graveyard. And three or more, banish one random card from your opponent's hand. When your opponent activates a card or effect that targets an Ice Barrier Synchro monster you control, you can banish this card from your graveyard, negate that effect. You can only use each of these effects once per turn. Whoa, it's spell speed too! Getting a little fast there, Ice Barriers, don't... <laughs> Don't faint from the excitement, except they can't even search this thing because of the wacky name. The primary effect is kind of unnecessary, as these are things you're gonna be doing with Trish anyway, and the likelihood of you going into their other synchros is often enough to warrant running this is pretty damn low. The protection effect is nice, but Clear Wall tends to do the job well enough. Also, it doesn't even work with Royal Knight, so there's basically no reason to run it. Time for the first ever Archetype Archive regrading because I'm too lazy to give these off the ring support reports. At the same time, I don't want to waste too much time on talking about the aspects of a deck I already covered ages ago, so let's keep it simple. Consistency gets a very strong 3 due to all the new searching and swarming effects. Power also gets a 3 due to the punchy new synchro as well as the deck's field presence, allowing you to pack the field with beaters from the extra deck. The recovery is also okay, not top deck Infernity Archfiend or anything, but you have enough ways of coming back to the game by revival or searching if your field gets messed up. The protection is still slightly lacking, as aside from clear wall, there's really not much going on here. Finally, Finally, the deck's modern versatility is up to another decent tree, as you have access to a huge variety of extra deck monsters, non-targeting removal, some cute stun effects, as well as plenty of generic water support to experiment with different builds. It's overall perfectly fine. Here's a decklist. Oh wait, it's my personal one. You want the boring decklist. Well, here you go, I guess. This is a good starting point as a pure build, only having some odd choices like Cryomancer for extra deck plays and Spiritual Water Artawi. You haven't lived if you didn't make Super Trish on the opponent's turn with Formula Synchron. To absolutely everybody's surprise, this wasn't that awful. This small set of cards is just about enough to revitalize this decrepit archetype's place in the game, albeit by giving it a swarm-heavy playstyle far removed from the dreadfully slow stun strategy it employed in the past, all the while paying solid respect to one of the most legendary synchros in the game. On the other hand, we also got some lore-heavy head-scratchers, such as Gishki Natalia's origin, which perfectly explains why she died in the first place. In the end, while this support plays it a little safe when it comes to adapting ice barriers into the 
modern style of play, given some very basic swarming and recovery effects, there's really not much else that could have been done if they were aiming to give the deck an actual win condition. If anything, I would have preferred some stun effects a little less focused on lore and a little more on playability, but at the end of the day we got a big ass new Trish, so do we really have any right to complain?